guys, welcome back. So yesterday we invited you to submit questions and we got a lot of questions. So thank you very much to everybody who submitted your questions. There's just way too many. Uh, I will not be able to answer all of them. I think we have over 100 questions submitted. So I'll do my best to answer some of the questions. Some I'm gonna answer directly to you guys if I can through a DM. If you still feel I haven't answered your question, just send me a message and I'll do my best to answer your questions. So thanks again and here we go. I honestly don't know. Uh, I wanted to be a plastic surgeon pretty much all my life. My dad was a plastic surgeon, so I wanted to be a plastic surgeon since I was six years old. That's all I wanted to do. So for this question, all future questions are gonna come up. Anything regarding prices, please check out our website. The link is in our bio, go and check it out. We have a fees page, has all the fees included right there. Be very transparent, go and check it out. <laughs> yes, I did, with help. That thing was big, delicious. But yeah, it's too much for one person. But it was so good. Yeah. Uh, it depends. Uh, the answer would be, I guess, not really. If it's something that bothers you, speak to your plastic surgeon about it. And you can do an add-on to your tummy tuck called a pubic lift or a pubic liposuction. Um, no. I have yet to see anything that's effective in treatment of cellulite. Everything is just temporary. Yeah. I wouldn't waste my money. Uh, that's a very complicated question, way too, way too much to answer in this short little story. Uh, but in summary, my body, my choice is perfectly fine, as long as your choices don't affect others. So you can do whatever you want, but make sure that your choices are not affecting others. Frankly, I'm not quite sure how to respond to this question. We get these questions once in a while, I'm not quite sure what to say. That's a great question. And the question really is, in general, how do you choose your plastic surgeon? And that's a very complex topic. We can do a little Q&A about it or I can do a little teaching session. Uh, there's way more to it. I can squeeze into a few seconds on an answer on a story. I would love to. Facelifts are one of my favorite surgeries to do, but you don't see us showing a lot of facelifts because as you can imagine, um, maintaining patient privacy while showing somebody's face is very difficult. Silicone injections are a disaster. So if you haven't had one, let me warn you, stay away from silicone injections. If you already had one, stay away from anything else because you're at risk of infection. Once this becomes infected, it's a disaster. So I would not go anywhere near that. If you've had silicone injections on your okay, cake, count yourself very lucky. Do nothing that can increase the risk of your infection. Don't do any injections, don't do BVL, don't do anything because if that silicone becomes infected, it is a disaster, absolute disaster. So. I guess to answer that question, you should speak to your rhinoplasty surgeon and ask them how long after your surgery can you lie on your stomach? Because you only need to lie on your stomach during the surgery and during your recovery. And so your nose may get in the way. For a tummy tuck or for any procedure, you only need investigations if there's an indication of your concern. So if you're otherwise healthy person with no heart conditions, no heart issues, no need for an EKG or any other investigation. In hindsight, things can become very obvious where you made mistakes where you didn't. But overall, all my mistakes and all my successes brought me where I am now, and I'm happy where I am now, so I would not want to go back and change it. Well, if you have a capsule contracture, you need to fix the capsule contracture, not lift the uncontracted breast. I'm not sure what this question is about. Um, if you watch our stories, if you see our feed, um, breast augmentation is actually the most common procedure we do. So yes, we do breast as well. I love to operate, I love to be in the OR. The OR is my happy place, my playground. Um, being in there and being creative and, and working people's bodies and crafting new shapes um, like art, that is what I find most exciting. So vomiting is not an allergic reaction to anesthesia. It's a common side effect, unfortunately. Uh, so if you vomit after surgery, that, that's okay. Yes, you can have surgery. Allergy is a different thing. If you really have an allergy, uh, that's a problem. My dad was a plastic surgeon, and so as a little kid, I grew up watching him. I met some of his patients. I was just amazed by the reconstructing work that he did. And so that's what made me go into plastic surgery. Absolutely, yes. Those are my favorite BBLs to do. We love skinny BBLs. Pretty much all of it. You know, all the procedures you see me do, I love to do. Uh, being my own boss, I was able to eliminate the procedures which I don't want to do. So things I don't want to like, to, don't like to do, don't want to do, I just don't do. Things that I love to do, you see me do. 
one thing I'm gonna add to that that you probably don't see me do because like I said earlier, it's a little difficult to show. Facelifts, I absolutely love doing facelifts, but for obvious reasons, it's a little difficult to show on social media. Yes, absolutely. The truth is nobody's perfect. No surgeon out there is perfect. Nobody can promise you perfect money back guarantee, happy results and no complications. But I can tell you from my personal experience, the patients that are most unhappy are the ones that had unrealistic expectations. I didn't meet their expectations. There was, there was something about it. Because right now, at this moment, there are patients that are absolutely devastated. They think they've been boshed and their lives are ruined. But if you look at their pictures, they actually look amazing. Like, not that they just, okay, they look amazing. Seriously amazing. I'm sorry, but no, we don't. Um, and it's also considered unprofessional as against the college guidelines to be really doing giveaways. So I know some people do, some clinics do, we don't. Um, I think the honest answer is yes. I'm a workaholic, I love what I do. I love being in the OR. Um, so, yeah, this is a great question. So I wanna put it out there for everybody. Cosmetic surgery, liposuction, tummy tuck, or anything else is not a weight loss procedure. It is not meant to help you lose weight. Yes, absolutely. Uh, when you get breast implants, you don't need to go big. You can go small. Going small is perfectly fine. The fido is not associated with the size of the implant, but the procedure itself and the type. So it doesn't matter how big you go, how small you go, the fee would be the same. I don't have an actual answer to that. I don't know, but I'm making an assumption that you know, what makes us different from others and makes us stand out is that we try to keep it real. We show you real plastic surgery. We don't show you cherry pick best cases and the most beautiful results. We try to show you the real thing so you know what goes on. Sometimes we get messages from our followers saying, oh man, that looks bad or that looks weird or something. I'm like, My answer is yes, that's the whole purpose of our account is to show you the real thing. It doesn't look always pretty. Sometimes it takes a while for things to show. It takes a while for things to heal and settle down. So we show you the good and the bad. Sometimes I show you complications and unlike any other account that I've ever seen, when I show you a problem, I show you it's my problem, I'm fixing my problem. If you watch other accounts and they're showing that they're fixing a problem, they always make it clear, not my work, I'm just fixing. To be honest, I don't have that much free time. Uh, whenever I read something, it's plastic surgery related. So those are probably books that you wouldn't be interested in. <laughs> This is a great question and there's a lot of confusion about this because there's no real hard set rule that applies to everybody. Everybody's a little bit different. Depends on the surgery you had, on the techniques used, uh, what the surgeon's post or protocol is. So everybody's a little bit different. In our clinic, we have a Faha expert, Shannon, so we refer all patients to her. She'll measure you, assess you, make all the recommendations and leave all those decisions to her. So you should avoid sitting on your butt for at least two weeks. I find though that patients that are really OCD about not sitting and don't sit for one to two months tend to maintain a lot more volume than people that sit earlier. So the longer you can avoid sitting, the more volume you can retain. I'll consider we can do a trade. Free boob job if you get me a free Rolls Royce or a Ferrari. Fair trade. So before COVID, we used to have people come and learn and observe. Unfortunately, since COVID started, we had to limit the number of people coming to the clinic. And so at this time, it's not available, but hopefully sometimes in the future, we'll open this up and we'll be able to get people to come and learn and observe. December, yes, it is by far the busiest month of the year. This is a really good question, an important question, because people want to understand it's not really the procedure. The most dangerous procedure is the one that you don't know how to do. BBL Brazilian butlets have the reputation of being the most dangerous. They're actually not. Uh, despite the initial hype around it, the studies have now shown that it's no more dangerous or maybe even less dangerous than doing a tummy tuck. BBL so Brazilian butlets are the ones that make the headlines. It just seems like there's always somebody dying from, Brazil, from a Brazilian butlet. It's, there's always some, somebody somewhere. The problem is not the procedure itself, but who's doing it, how it's being done, and where it's being done. People die after Brazilian butler for two main reasons. One, number one, is that the surgeon injects fat into the blood vessels. That's the wrong thing. You should never inject into the muscle or under the muscle to minimize that specific risk. Second major reason why people die is improper patient screening and selections. We turn a lot of patients away, and when these people get turned away, they go and find somebody who's willing to do the surgery, despite the fact that we told them it's unsafe to proceed. And on a little tangent, there's always all kinds of vicious false rumors floating around 
Uh, I recently saw someone make a comment that we had a patient die in our clinic. Let me be 100% clear. Nobody has ever died, nobody has ever come close to dying who was at the risk of dying at our clinic. Thank you, and we appreciate you taking a little moment to write us a little note. Um, thank you. Again, thank you very much for taking the time to write us a nice thank you note. Um, we always love to hear from our happy patients, so thank you again. That's a great question, it's a common question to get how far out we're booking. So in general, smaller procedures we can squeeze in earlier, bigger procedures we're booking far out. So BBLs, full body makeovers, you're probably looking at April, May maybe. Um, something small like a labiaplasty, which can be done on the local, we can squeeze it in at the end of any day. We could squeeze you in next week. And breast augmentations, within a few weeks, we should be able to squeeze you in. So if you're interested in having surgery with us, please contact us. Get your consultation out of the way because you need to have a consultation before we are willing to book you a surgical date. And also during the consultation, maybe determine exactly what it is that you need, how many hours we'll need for the procedure, and so we can find where we have a time slot big enough to accommodate you. This is a great question because it applies to all surgeries. Understand your body is not made of marble. We're not going to chisel out this marble statue that's going to stay the same for the rest of your life. Your body is going to continue to change with age, with gravity, weight gains, fluctuations. So nothing is permanent. Understand that cosmetic surgery reset things, makes things better. And now that the surgery is over, you need to maintain your results. You need to live a healthy lifestyle, eat well, exercise well, don't smoke, all those things to maintain your results. Yes, we do remove all the implants, and yes, we can then reconstruct the breast with a breast lift or some other procedure. I was born in uh, communist Czechoslovakia, and my parents and I escaped from there when I was 13 years old. We left with nothing. We arrived in Canada with two suitcases that had nothing but t-shirts and shorts on them. That was That's all we had. Yes, we do those as well, and they're called body lifts. Body lift, lower body lift, circumferential body lift, belt lipectomy, those are many different names for the same procedure that you refer to here as a 360 tummy tuck, which really is a 360 tummy tuck. That's correct, you don't need to get a muscle repair with every tummy tuck. I have patients who are in great shape, just have lots of loose skin, their muscles are in great shape, there's no need for a muscle repair for them. Uh, we are working on some dates for the near future. Uh, okay, send me a DM, send just me a message, and I'll get you in touch with Dina, my patient coordinator, uh, at QMC and she'll let you know all the details. Before I became a plastic surgeon and before I had kids, I loved to do all kinds of things, martial arts, skiing, swimming, um, computers. Once you have kids, your world changes and it really does. Now my by far most favorite pastime hobby is just hanging out with my kids. Now they're becoming teenagers, so they don't wanna hang out with me, but I just love just being in the same room with them, just, just being with them. I'm sorry you're having a hard time reaching us. Our staff checks voicemail several times a day. We respond to our voicemails the same day. So I'm not quite sure why this is not happening. Make sure that you leave your voicemail and you, that you leave your phone number properly or check your spam folder if you send us an email. I'm sorry, we have a rule. Never leave any dessert behind. As I mentioned earlier, by far the most favorite part of my job is being in the OR, actually operating. My least favorite part of this is that unfortunately, uh, the nature of this business is that it attracts a lot of people with self-esteem and body issues and sometimes these issues are more psychological and physical. Not really. I, I had a great time in school. I had a great time in residency. If you guys have specific questions, please DM me. I'm happy to talk about my med school and residency experience. Um, they were great, I thought. Um, yeah, Med school actually wasn't intense. Getting into med school was intense. Uh, that was the most difficult thing I've ever done, probably, getting into medical school. Once I got into medical school, to be honest, it was almost a breeze. Compared to undergrad, it was nowhere as difficult. For me, undergrad was the most difficult thing. I was studying 24-7, evenings, nights. I spent every weekend in the library reading, studying. Uh, because of the pressure, you must get top marks to get into medical school. Once you're in medical school, you can focus more on learning than the marks themselves. For me, undergrad was the most difficult thing. I was studying 24-7, evenings, nights. I spent every weekend in the library reading, studying. Uh, because of the pressure, you must get top marks to get into medical school. Once you're in medical school, you can focus more on learning than the marks themselves. Undergrad was very stressful because of the need to get the marks and to get through the admission process. Once I was in med school, it was actually fun. It was enjoyable. I was doing what I liked. I was learning what I wanted to learn. Um, I, I, I had a great time. I'm gonna cut it off here. We have lots more questions. I, I just don't wanna 
keep going forever. So if I haven't answered your question, please send me a DM. I'll be happy to answer. I'm going to let it off now. We'll let Melanie take over and go to the OR with our surgeons.